Hello students. In this video, we're going to use SAGE as a tool to help us uh, compute a Fourier series approximation to a function. Now what we're really going to do is compute an nth partial sum of a Fourier series because a Fourier series is an infinite series. A little disclaimer, I'm not going to say anything about uh, convergence of the Fourier series. I'm just going to assume that everything works out and that the series converges. I'm also going to assume that I can do things like integrate the Symphonid series term by term. Um, so uh, again, I'm not going to um, really um, sweat any of the details around convergence. The focus of this video is really to um, see how to go about computing a Fourier series. Um, so without uh, any more um, disclaimers, um, let's proceed. Okay, the first thing is we're going to declare our variables, K, M, N, T, Y, L. Uh, I may not need all of these, but I'll just uh, um, declare a bunch of them. And I'm gonna assume that N is an integer. Now, later on, I'm gonna make an assumption that M is an integer, but I'm not gonna code that in. Um, I'll explain that later. Okay, the function we're gonna look at is this piecewise uh, linear function, where we're over the interval from minus pi to pi. Um, here's a definition of the function, and here's what it looks like. Now, we're assuming, actually, that this function is periodic. That means it'll repeat um, after pi here, and it'll repeat over in this direction as well. But we're just going to focus on this part of the function. Now, I didn't have to make a piecewise definition. I could have just assumed that f2 was the function, and it went from minus pi to pi. I'm sorry, from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, but... Uh, I did this for a couple reasons. One is this is mathematically what's happening um, and what I'm thinking about. Um, two, I just also wanted to show you how to define a piecewise function in SAGE. Now, I'm making an assumption that you know how to use SAGE and you know how to um, plot, integrate, and differentiate in SAGE, um, especially when there's parameters like n involved. So I do have a video um, on how to do basic calculus with SAGE with parameters. And I would recommend that you watch that video um, first before proceeding with this one. Okay, um, another thing to notice is um, these vertical lines. These actually don't exist mathematically. There's a jump discontinuity here. But a lot of these computer algebra systems, they, um, um, they do their sampling and you see these kinds of uh, vertical lines um, present. Um, there's ways to get rid of them, but I'm not going to worry about that. All right. Um, here's what a Fourier series looks like. Um, so we're using a trigonometric polynomial to approximate this function. This one half you see here is a um, pro, um, is a result of convergence analysis. Um, just I'm not going to get into that. Um, this one half is needed, so let's just uh, leave it there. And then um, Notice that if uh, n is an integer, and if n were 0, then the sign would be 0, so there wouldn't be any b naught term. Um, so we start our indexing from n equals 1. And you normally would think that we just need an a naught here, but like I said, this 1 half actually comes as a result of uh, a convergence um, proof. But um, just uh, know that our definition of the Fourier series, we're going to have this 1 half here. Um, there are other definitions of Fourier series. Um, this is the one that we're going to use. Okay, um, now I want to just show you what um, this fun what this approximation is going to look like. So remember, this is what our function looks like, this top hat here, and we're going to use a trigonometric uh, polynomial, and we're going to truncate this series um, after a certain number of terms, and it will be an nth partial sum. So let me just show you what the result looks like before I show you how to construct it. So yeah, you can see some of the math taking place. Here it is. Okay, so this red squiggly stuff here, um, this is the trigonometric polynomial. These, this is the sum of sines and cosines. Okay, this is 20 terms, it looks like. And so you can see it's starting to approximate this top hat. So that's going to be the end goal. All right, so um, now this uh, tilde here, this means has Fourier series. So you read this as f of x has Fourier series and then this trigonometric series here. Um, I'm going to talk as if this is an equation and we have equality here from now on. Okay. 
So when you see this, um, the first thing you notice is, well, how do you compute these ANs and BNs? Um, okay, the way that we're going to do that is um, we're going to use orthogonality of the cosines and sines. So um, I'm going to multiply all these terms first by a cosine. And I'm going to multiply it by a cosine m pi over L of x, as you can see down here. And I'm going to use the property that when you integrate this product of cosines, you get 0 when m is not equal to n and L when m is equal to n. Okay, so we're going to um, multiply each of these terms by this cosine m pi over L times x. And then I'm going to integrate term by term. Again, just assuming that I can do that. I'll stop it here. And if you want to see what happens, um, I use Sage to um, compute this integral. I call it FC for a cosine, the Fourier cosine coefficient. And um, you notice that when I multiply a cosine by a sine and integrate, let me just scroll down here, um, I'm going to get a zero in either case. Okay, that, that integral always yields zero. I recommend as an exercise you um, just perform this integral and you'll see that you'll always get zeros. Okay, so um, when m is equal to n, I'll get a uh, I'll get an an L and um, oh right up here I'll get an L and otherwise I get a zero. Now that will cancel out all of the terms except for one of the a m's in this case. And then on the left hand side I'll have an I'll have the f of x times the cosine m pi over L times x and there will be an integral and that's the definition of the a n. Let me scroll down to show you what that looks like. So here's all the mathematics. You could pause it and take a look at the math here that's being done. Um, this integral will go to zero. This integral is zero because of the orthogonality of cosine and sine. And then here we're left with either an L when M and N are equal to each other. And that's how we solve for AM. And this, is, this here is the Fourier cosine coefficient. It's similar for the sine. If I wanted to get the BNs up here, I multiply everything by a sine, do the integration. I get this result. It's as if m is approaching n, so you're getting something like, like the sine theta over theta. The limit as theta approaches 0, that's 1. That's what's going on here. And it's multiplied by an L. So hence, you get this result. So again, let me scroll down. And this is what the math looks like to get the BMs. Now in Sage, I can define these um, coefficients. Now I don't need this sum here because that's going to be 0 because F1 is 0. And I don't need this sum um, here because F3 is 0. But I'm going to leave, or summon, but I'm going to leave that in there just, you know, um, for completeness. Um, so this is the only term that's contributing and it's from the L over 2 to L over 2 where L is equal to pi. That's the length of our interval. Um, okay, so I define the function. That function is actually just outputting this Fourier coefficient here. And um, I explained the range function in a previous video. This is just a, a for loop and I just print off the first few co uh, coefficients. So you see that the a0 is 1, then the a1 is 2 over pi, a2 is 0, a3 is two thir minus 2 thirds um, pi, and then uh, over pi, and then so on and so forth. And so it seems that the um, even terms are 0 and the odd terms give some contra con kind of contribution. Um, Likewise, if I compute the sine coefficients, the Fourier sine coefficients, and here I did leave off the F1 and F3 terms, and um, they're all going to be zeros. And that makes sense because the top hat function is an even function. And an odd function against an even function gives us an odd function, and an integral of an odd function over a symmetric interval is zero. Okay, so now we know how to compute the ANs and the BNs. So, 
um, we can compute the sum. Now, since the bns are all zeros, I'm going to neglect the sine term. And I'm just going to compute the um, cosine term. So here's what our um, Fourier series is going to look like. I'm going to call it u so that it's different than the function f. And it's going to be 1 half because remember a0 is 1 plus, and then I'm going to use the sage function sum. And um, I'm, just what you see here is um, exactly what you see here. Okay. And uh, so that's how I'm going to define it. And then I'm going to call that function. Um, LL will be my interval. I'll call, instead of calling it L, which I left as a generic variable, LL will be the specific pi interval. So that's, um, remember, we're going from minus pi to pi. So our definition is minus L to L. So L is pi in this case. I'm going to do 20 terms. And I'm going from minus pi to pi. And I'll color it red. And then I'll um, plot that against, overlay that with the top hat function. And here's what it looks like. And then um, what I'll do down here is I'll show you what it looks like if I use um, 10, 15, and 20 terms. And for my range function, I just had to do something higher than 20 because then it'll neglect everything beyond 20. So if I just do 21, I could have set this to 25 as well. But um, if I use the range function, it's going to start at 10. It's going to go up to 20 and then up to 21, but it's going to truncate that 21. So it'll stop at 20 and it's going to go in uh, increments of 5. So we'll get 10, 15, 20. So um, at 10, for uh, 5 terms, it'll be... Um, dark blue. For um, 10 terms, it'll be light blue. I'm sorry, dark blue. For 10 terms, it'll be um, uh, red. And for 15 terms, it'll be green. Um, so just like in the um, video on the basic calculus with parameters in Sage, um, I'm using the same type of function where I'm overlaying the plots. I initialize the P and then I add the plot. P is a plot. I add it to... Um, the next Fourier um, series term that you see here. I'm going to plot that term. It, the first one will be n is 10. So here I had n is 5. Then n will be 10. I'll plot that. I'll add it to my list of plots. And then the next time it comes around, it'll be 15. Uh, this n will be 15. I'll add it to my list of plots. Then n will be 20. I'll add it to my list of plots. And um, I'll keep track of my colors. So, so, so this would be the colors one, two, three. So here, I'm sorry, zero, one and two. I apologize, one and two. So here's zero, one, and two. So that corresponds to five, 10, and 15. I'll add all these plots together and then I'll show it. And here's what my nth partial sum, which I called u, which is the approximation to the top hat function f of x, which is in cyan that you see here. And you can see that the um, blue is a lot wavier, bigger waves than the approximation. And it's a little bit further away. It's not kind of catching, it can't catch the corners quite as well. The red is a little bit um, better. Okay, it's a little bit wavier and it's a little bit tighter. And it's starting to catch the corners a little bit. And green's even doing better. So evidently it looks like this series is converging to this top hat function. And if I increase the number of terms, um, then the hope is that it would actually converge to this function f of x. And there's actually theory to support that. So that's how you use Sage to compute, um, or use it as a tool to compute um, the Fourier coefficients. Now, if you know anything about Sage, you know that Sage has these commands built in. Um, the purpose of this video is to assist you as a tool as if you were doing this by hand and you wanted to check your work. It's pedagogical. It's not functional in the sense of being able to use Sage. Um, but uh, I wanted you to see what it would look like if you wanted to um, compute these Fourier coefficients by hand. And that's why I call this the long way to do it. Um, in another video, in a subsequent video, I will show you how to use the Sage commands to compute these Fourier coefficients. All right. Good luck.